Hello everyone. Sector 16 here again. Today I want to talk to you about wrath. What is wrath? Well, Webster Dictionary describes what wrath is a strong, vengeful, vengeful anger or indignation, a retributionary punishment of an offense, a crime, or divine judgment. Now, Revelation 6 is also known as the wrath of the Lamb. And the reason why we're seeing that the wrath now being placed, there's two different wraths. You have the day of the Lord and you have the wrath of the Lamb. The wrath of the Lamb covers the six seals that are mentioned in Revelation 6. But this is the one thing that the Father wanted us to know. In Romans 1 8, for the wrath is revealed from heaven against the ungodly, the unrighteousness of man who suppress the truth of unrighteousness in unrighteousness. So you see, everything that the Father is doing now is preparing the way for the final wrath, the day of the Lord, His wrath. He wants us to know this because see, His wrath does several things. One, admonish and it corrects. Are there examples of His wrath throughout history? Yes. Let's take a look at Adam for a minute. Let's go back to the book of Genesis. Let's look at what he did with Adam and Eve. His wrath was more of a kind of a wrath that started it all. Because he just handed out punishment between the serpent seed and the woman's seed. That's wrath. Now let's go on a little further into it. We know that there's a war that's between those two seeds that exist even to today. Well, see, the wrath plays a part in everything that God does. Like I said before, it is to help us in these times to be able to come back to Him. Now, I know a lot of Christians, they like to use Bible quotes and they like to use verses. See now, one of the verses that people use, for God did not appoint us unto wrath, but unto obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's found in 1 Thessalonians 5.9. See, many people like to break that scripture. Many people like to break that scripture in half by saying we are not appointed unto wrath. But the rest of it they don't talk about because we are appointed to salvation. See, the world is appointed to wrath because it's a sinful world. And it is appointed for that time for them to go through that. The time is now. Everything is fixed. It's fixed, fixing, like I said before in my previous videos. They're fixing to happen. In fact, the seals have already been broken. We're down to the last couple. The one thing that I want to show you is this. And tell you about as we examine this. As you look at wrath... There are many ways that Father used his wrath for his purposes. He used wrath to bring the plagues on Egypt. To be able to release the Israelites under the captivity of a Pharaoh who did not know God. The other times that he used wrath, it's going back in the Gen book of Genesis again, at Nimrod. The Terror of Babel. 
but this time it was a type of rest where he confused languages. And that's the thing that he does. He can use his wrath to meet his purpose. That's what wrath is for for him. It's not, it's always used in a way that it fits his purpose to be able to protect us. Now we go to Sodom and Gomorrah. His wrath was used there. But Abraham did something very unusual. He bargained with God. He said, Father, he started with 15, worked his own way down, all the way down to five. You could find five righteous men, would you hold off your wrath? And God told him, yes. But we know how that story is because there was only found one, and that was Lot, Lot and his family. And they were rescued. But the destruction happened because of the wrath of God. We caught up the seed of the serpent with infestation there. You see, when God uses wrath in everyday life, it is a teaching tool, not only to admonish us, but to teach us His laws, His ways. See, the Father wants us to understand certain things, but He also wants us to understand this. You can find this in Romans twelve nineteen. It says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather place, give place unto wrath. I will repay, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You see, wrath in itself is a very useful tool to our Heavenly Father. Wrath not only corrects, like I've said before, admonish, it teaches. Another good example is when Jesus healed a man that was lame for 38 years. And he told him, after he was healed, sin no more, for if, if you do, worse things will come upon you. Well, that's a pre-warning of wrath. The signs that are mentioned in, in the biblical text, all the way through it, are those such warnings. But they come with a warning that the God's wrath is His. He takes full responsibility for that wrath. But He allows us, to, He wants us to under know that we are given unto salvation and not unto wrath. Because the evil ones who perpetrate the crime in this world, they are appointed to wrath. See, the Father wants everyone to know the difference what wrath is. Look it up. Study it. Research what wrath is. Find out what its purpose is. See, the Father has so many ways that he uses wrath within itself. That the beauty of wrath itself is not just total destruction and chaos. But it's a way to confirm his word. To way to wake people up to the truth of the reality of a sinful world, of being in a sinful world. That's why the Father said to Paul, Do not conform to the world. Separate yourself from the world. Because they are appointed unto wrath. See, we do not have to follow the world. Because they are constantly attacking us. And trying to get us to go back into that world because they know their destination is their destination is destruction through the wrath of God on the day of the Lord. That's the reason why in the last sentence of chapter six it says, Hide us from the one who sits on the throne. That's what they're referring to. The wrath of the Lamb. See, they know the Bible as well. They know the scenario. But still, they're fighting on. There's levels and levels and levels of information that are out there that they're doing to you right now. I've told you what the psyops are, the behavioral psyops and the, op and the uh, psychological operation psyops. There's nothing new under the sun. 
yet wrath is coming. It's the Father's wrath against them. And if you are in the world and you're living according to the world and you deny Jesus Christ, you will be under wrath. Make no doubt about that. But we are not given to wrath. We are given to salvation. That's what the Father wants us. That's why he said, I sent my son on your behalf. That you may have salvation through him. That's why it says in John 3.16, so clearly, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting right, life. That is not wrath. That is a way out of wrath that is coming. So it's very important to understand the distinction of what wrath is and how wrath works. There are many instances in the Bible of God using wrath. But it, looking at wrath at a different eye view from his point of view, not from what the world looks at it as. See, the Father has ordained these things, and they know that when the Father had ordained these things thousands and thousands of years ago in His Word, they know that their time is short. That's why they're hurrying. That's why they're implementing these things that you're seeing. That's why you're seeing confusion among the people. That's why you're seeing people who are still asleep saying, Oh, well, okay, whatever, let it happen. I'm not going to fight against it. I'll work with the system. The system is the beast system. That is the system that is under wrath. Everything about what they do, how they move, what they think, what they put out to deceive you, because they know that if they're going to go through the wrath, they're going to take as many of you as possible with them to go through the wrath and eventually end up in hell. See, that's the whole point of understanding the book of Revelation. Yes, there are events in Revelation that still need to play out. But they've already set up the majority of the kingdom of the beast empire. We haven't got through all that because of the last part of 6 has not been fulfilled. Of Revelation 6, that is. But see, through the sermon of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to understand these things. That's why it's so important to read his words. You cannot take just a scripture verse and chop it in and say it in half and say, well, we're not appointed unto wrath. Like I said, the last part of that scripture is, but we are appointed to salvation. See, when you, when you break that scripture down and you say we're not appointed unto wrath, you're saying to, your, to the world that, look, hey, I'm a believer in God, I'm not appointed to wrath, but that's where you leave it. Because you don't know the rest of the scripture. See, for that, salvation is open to everyone. Around the world right now, it's open to everyone. That's the reason why you, it's your choice. That's the reason why the Father gives you a choice. You have to choose this day who you will serve. For me and my household, we will choose to serve the Lord. I hope that you will choose to serve the Lord. I hope you will grow in your experience with the Lord. And with our Heavenly Father and through the Holy Spirit, the discernment that is given. I had a talk last night with the Father that lasted four hours. It was wild because it's conversation like I'm having right now with you on YouTube here. I was asking him, firing off questions left and right, just like this. I wasn't in a gentle mood. I wasn't in a spiritual mood. I wasn't in a kind of reverence mood. I was, though, although I was humbling myself before him, although I was giving me reverence and all that. But the conversation in itself lasted over four hours. I didn't even know it. Because, see, people, you have to wake up to the reality that the Father is here. The Father is working, setting up the world for wrath. 
with a great day of the Lord. If you really want to know what the true global reset is, it is the day of the Lord. The true global reset is the millennial reign. They know it. They don't want you to know it. That's the reason why I, wrote, I read that first verse to you. For the wrath is revealed from heaven against all ungodly unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. That's Romans 1 8. That is exactly what we're seeing. That is exactly what the serpent seed is doing to you and to me and to everybody around the world. But the rest is like I said. The Father loves you. That's why he said, My sheep knows my voice. It's been time to get to know him. You have a choice, it's your choice. You can choose eternity with God or you can choose damnation with the angels and the world system in hell with total separation. And believe me, hell is not a place you want to be. Because I haven't described what hell is like yet. What we're fixing to go through and what we're seeing is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of parts of the information from Matthew 24, 25, Luke 21, Mark 13, that are now in play, that are actually coming to pass. They're actually getting people to snitch on people. That's actually in the Bible. That's actually in Luke chapter 21, verse 16. Go look it up for yourself. We're going to see more of this. This is not going to get easier and easier. In fact, it's going to get more intense. That's why you need the Bible to understand all these things. That's why I say you, you have a choice. The choice is share what you will do with the information that you have, that you are given. And there are people out there who give the correct information. Don't fall for all their narratives, okay? Their narratives are designed to do exactly that. To confuse you, to keep you trapped, to keep you in complacency. So that you will not have to react. That's what they want. So I want y'all to know that. Okay. This is Sector 16. I'm signing out for now. Please share, like, and subscribe. Click the bell. If you have a comment, leave them in the comment section. I will read them. If you have a question or a prayer request, leave them in the comment section. I will pray for you. Until next time, y'all have a blessed day. Thank you.